painting a video of John Bunyan again. It's been a little while, but I uh, want to get back to this and show you the next step in the process. Here I'm working on the bars on the window because he was in jail. And so I'm just adding the shadows here using some raw umber dark. And uh, I decided I didn't like the angle. So I'm just changing it to a little more of a steep angle so that the uh, shadow angle doesn't mimic the same angle as the bars themselves. But uh, again, just raw umber dark mixed with a little titanium white and some matte medium and a mist of water to thin it out and make it very fluid and uh, goes over very, very easy. Because again, John Bunyan was in prison for preaching the gospel. And he stayed in prison for quite a while, I believe 12 years. And he would uh, make, sell shoelaces and different things uh, to support himself and his family while he was there. And I'm just adding the vertical lines here to the bars. Now, in my original reference photo, of course, I didn't have those bars, so I'm just kind of inventing what it could look like. I use my fingers a lot when I paint to smooth out any inconsistencies or wipe away things I don't like. It's just very quick. And uh, acrylic paint is non-toxic, so I'm not afraid of getting the paint on my fingers. Uh, but I'm going all the way up to the edge. And my brush was getting a little bit worn, so it wasn't quite doing what I wanted it to do. So sometimes I have to use my finger to smooth it out a little bit. But I just basically want to get some lines established there. Now we're working on the main part of the portrait. And I'm going to be working on the uh, figure of John Bunyan. Now I added a glaze previously um, in the other video. Now I'm going on top with raw sienna and I believe just a little touch of burnt sienna, but mostly just raw sienna um, mixed with matte medium. So it's about a 70% medium to 30% pigment mix. I'm just going over his clothing and um, whereas in the last glaze I had burnt sienna and alizarin crimson, I believe this is a little warmer. It's, it's nice to add a couple different tones. You want to add the uh, somewhat pinkish tones and then the yellowish tones and it does give the painting more warmth. Using that same glaze on top of his hair um, and just blocking that in, I believe he kind of had a, a straw blonde hair color. Well, actually it was probably more on the brown side going by the uh, going by the reference photos because he actually did have his portrait painted. Um, he lived in the 1600s and uh, we, we do have a few paintings of him to go by. So even though I used my own uh, photo here for the likeness, or at least to get the sense of lighting, to get, get the sense of shading, I, I used the um, portrait of him uh, to actually dial in the likeness. Now I'm going on top of his fingers, adding just a little glaze, establishing that shadow between uh, his knuckles because that portion would be in shadow the other part would be illuminated and all it takes is just one little quick blocking in of a glaze to establish that and then once we have that foundation we can build on top <clears throat> now I'm gonna put in a glaze in the background and I'm adding um, ultramarine blue raw or dark alizarin crimson mixed together with some matte medium and uh, just going on top and really establishing some contrast. It does take a few layers to really get that richness, get that depth, um, and get the values dark enough so that you have a good um, contrast throughout the painting between the lights and the darks. Your light areas in the painting really can't shine, really can't look vibrant without adding the darker values to complement them, to contrast them. Now I'm even working this into his hair a little bit, um, a little bit into the side of his face because that area also needs to get a little darker. And just touching it with the edge of my brush. Notice I didn't go all the way up to the edge of his cheekbone, but just that area uh, between his hair and the edge of his neck and uh, behind his, his cheek. I'm going to add this glaze 
um, up to the edge of the table and uh, develop a harsh edge between the highlighted part of the table and the background, but a little bit of a softer edge going up to his clothing that can cut up along the inside of the contours of the fabric. We want to establish a few of the wrinkles. Now, the sketch already took care of a lot of that, so we're just building on top of that foundation. I added a dark line between the edge of his, the underside of his arm and the table. So we're suggesting that there is a nice shadow there. Um, and now it's time to load up my paint with a little more glaze. I'm going to continue this um, to the other side. Now, it's good to get a stopping point if you have to load up your paint or load up your brush rather for more paint. Try to stop at a point where um, it's a small distance uh, where your two layers are going to meet together. And you can see I stopped at the top of his head. And that distance, that size where the two layers would overlap is very small. So it's a good place to stop. Um, but that'll really help you to get some smoother blending in your glazes. Now I'm going to bring this glaze all the way over to the other side using brush strokes going kind of vertically, diagonally, in many different directions. And uh, that really gives you a smooth application. Um, I'm going to flip it on the other side. You're always going to want to flip your brush over to get the paint that's on the other side off of it before you load up your brush with more paint. Uh, we're cutting up around the edge of the pen and then cutting up along the edge of the uh, books on his table <clears throat> and then against his hand. Now you can really get a lot of mileage out of the same brush. This is just a flat edge brush. I believe it's um, half, one half inch, three quarter inch. And uh, you can get a lot of mileage out of that brush without having to switch to another one just by how you hold the brush and the angle that the bristles are in relation to the canvas. Again, I need more glaze. Got to do a glaze on the bottom on the underside of the table. And uh, just working my way across there. I'm going to pull that paint all the way across. All the way across. And uh, it's going to basically cut into the edge of those table legs. And I really want to smooth it out. Now, what's nice about painting with the glazing technique is you have several layers. You have the compounded effect of many layers working together. So you don't have to get it right all in one layer. If I were applying this layer on a white canvas, I wouldn't have the same effect. But now I can apply it. You can see the translucency as I apply this glaze on top of the table. And uh, the lighter value shows through. So it's not black. You can see it's kind of a brownish color. And basically I'm just darkening that. So I could use the same exact glaze that I used for the background for the table because I already separated them apart in previous layers. I already provided the contrast and distinguishing between those two objects. I do want to add just a little bit of a lighter opaque color here um, in a few areas in the background just to suggest that um, the light from the window is cascading down a little bit. So I'm just going on top with a slightly opaque color of, I believe, raw sienna and uh, burnt sienna and a little bit of alizarin crimson, if I remember correctly. And we're just going to blend that in. Now, you could use titanium white, but that tends to be very cool. And we want to get a little bit of a warmer color. And so you'll find raw sienna is a very opaque pigment. And it will get you um, a nice uh, opaque or semi-opaque glaze without that uh, muddiness that you can get with titanium white. Uh, titanium white, of course, is good for many things, um, but you have to use it in the right locations, the right spaces. Um, using the thin edge of the brush, just to establish a few ideas or suggestions of bricks on the wall. You can see that just in a few little locations. I'm just touching um, making some vertical strokes, horizontal strokes. They're all kind of at an angle. I do want to create that perspective idea that the bricks are you know, going behind them at, at a vanishing point that's off the edge of the picture plane. But I do want to um, portray the idea of bricks behind him because he wasn't a prison. 
And uh, again, John Bunyan wrote The Pilgrim's Progress. It's just a famous book that uh, next to the Bible is one of the all-time Christian bestsellers. And uh, it is a, a very important book, and it, it corresponds to many theological points in the Bible. You know, that we're sinners in need of salvation, and we can't save ourselves. We can try to do good works to lighten our burden, but it's, it's a futile effort. The only way we can be saved is by trusting in Jesus Christ, that he paid the price for our sins. And uh, through that, then, we can receive the forgiveness and we can uh, have our course set for heaven. And in the next life, we can experience the joy and uh, just the endless um, reward of being with God forever and ever. Now I'm adding um, a glaze to his clothing. Now we, we had done a glaze previously. It's had a chance to dry. So now we're going on top with a darker glaze. I believe we're amber dark, lizard crimson. I have that warmer glaze behind it as a foundation, so um, it really helps to enrich the color, to enliven it. You have these many glazes working together, but notice how the wrinkles of his clothing still shines through. And that's the beauty of the glazing technique is you can do a detailed sketch and not lose the details of your sketch. You can just keep adding on, adding on, adding on, and uh, transforming your sketch into a finished painting. Now I painted this a little more aggressively than my usual uh, paintings done in the glazing technique. My glazes are a little more opaque because um, this painting I did under a tight deadline and I had to get it finished basically all within one night. I started it, finished it all within one night. So I'm painting just a little more opaque than what I usually do. Uh, but you can see where it's at in the process. Um, just mixing a few more colors right now and uh, we apply just a little bit more work to this and call this session done. I just want to suggest basically the um, idea of his legs being under that table so I'm using uh, just a little bit of raw sienna, alizarin crimson and um, just putting in those suggestions of his legs. So we're doing that opaquely, and that's okay. You don't have to do everything translucently. Um, but uh, I'm just following my reference photo, getting one area in front of the other. It'll be more of a shadow closer to his body, but the knees will be more illuminated. And so I'm now blending that into the background color, adding a little bit of ultramarine blue and raw or dark just to tone that out and blend it into the background area. And this will uh, pretty soon take us up to the end of the video here. Um, let me just add a few more final touches on this area of his legs blending that into the background. But there'll be some more layers to go. And I do want to show you the continued work on this portrait. I do have uh, some more progress to make on it. <clears throat> and so I'm going to show you that in future videos. But I do want to say thank you so much for watching this video. And hey, if you like it, would you uh, give me a thumbs up? Give me a thumbs up. I appreciate that. And that helps this video to be seen by more artists like yourself and more art appreciators like yourself. And if you're interested in learning the glazing technique step by step, I have more tutorials, um, even a full length class, and that's contained in the Portrait Painting Challenge. You can go to realisticacrylic.com and you can take the Portrait Painting Challenge. It's still ongoing, even though it officially ended back in uh, April and May of this year, 2020, as I record. But go ahead and take the challenge. And you can um, learn from me step by step how to paint a portrait you can be proud of. That's at realisticacrylic.com. I have uh, about eight hours of classes, recorded video, all for free. I'd love to share that with you, be a blessing to you. Uh, but thank you so much for watching this video. I look forward to seeing you um, in future videos that I do. And again, you can find out more about my work at realisticacrylic.com mattfilio.com for my paintings uh, but thanks so much for watching subscribe to this channel for more videos like this 
God bless, and we'll talk to you soon.